Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's all fantastic and wonderful. Everything here is great. And over the past couple of, well, you know, the last week or so, I've been telling you about my, uh, the celebration that my children and I have, that we call our solstice tradition. Um, and, and in putting that together, we have our own mythology. And, and one of my favorite things to do around this time of year is kind of look into um, other traditions, other people's traditions, especially like ancient traditions. Like, you know, my kids ask questions like, why why do we have a Christmas tree? Like, what is that? And so we talk about that. Or why, you know, why do we put lights on the house? Don't know. That's not, that's a, re, that's a recent thing. You know, it's not something that was done. Um, and it really, the, the interesting part about it is, for me, the, the, the question maybe I have because I'm not... Um, I'm not an anthropologist or something. Like, we we like to say that these traditions started because these peoples believed this, but do we know they believed it? Like, do we know that? We, can we really say for certain that these people in ancient days had these festivals where they whipped? Uh, apple trees to ward off spirits. Did, like, did they believe in that? Or is that just what they told their kids, right? Like, 2,000 years from now, are the people in those in those times going to look back at our times and go, can you believe these people believed in this, this reindeer, this guy who traveled the whole world and delivered presents in one night? Like, no, we don't believe in that. It's just what we tell our kids. Like, it's a, it's a mythological tradition, but it's not something that we believe. Like, it's not, we're not... We, we no longer go door to door on Halloween, dress up in scary costumes to try to ward off evil spirits. Did they actually believe that when that tradition started? Maybe. I don't know. I'm actually genuinely curious. Or was it just stories that they told their kids, very similar to the way we are today? Um, I would love... Th that's, that's the one thing that, like, can we know that? I guess not. I mean, I, if you want to believe the writings, like... Interestingly enough, a lot of our, what we would call our, the secular Christmas, the tree, the fire, the singing, the caroling, the, you know, sticking cloves and oranges or whatever you do in your area, those are, almost all of those things are like a Slavic, Nordic, regional, Germanic traditions, like that have been kind of amalgamated into this Western European tradition that... It, came over to the U.S. and, and it stuck around here. Um, and if you read those Slavic, or if you read the accounts of those Slavic, Nordic, maybe even, you know, Eastern traditions, those are all written by Westerners who went and observed a thing. They went to this person's village or they went to this area where these people believed in X. And they wrote about it. They did this because they believed X. And it's like, did they? Or did you just as the writer, assume that, like, did, did they, or were they just having a good festival, and they had reasons for it, like we do today, they tell their children things that, like we do today, we basically lied, right, did, like, we lie to our children about Christmas, and Santa Claus, and the Easter Bunny, and Tooth Fairy, and all that stuff, is that what the old people were doing, or did they actually believe, uh, I would love to know, like, I would love to go, the, it, it, given a time machine, I, I've always loved, I've always thought it would be more interesting to go look at normal people than to try to do some life changing historical, you know, event. Like you know, uh, I've always thought it'd be much more interesting to go back in time and see how people actually were. Because I think from a modern day perspective, <laughs> at least for me in my education and my upbringing. I assume that the old, that people in the ancient times were just dumb. Were just they just didn't know anything. I mean, obviously they didn't have the wealth of information that we have today. They didn't have any of that. But I don't think they were dumb. I think that they were very capable. And I think that uh, you know a lot of what we assume was religious tradition was more like what we call Christmas today. More of a secular tradition. More of a kind of on the cheek type thing. But I. 
is there a way of knowing that? Like, you know, the, 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 the sad part about history is we only know what people wrote down. And whatever that person wrote down might have been a fairy tale. Like, it might have just been something that they wrote for fun. And we take it as fact. You know, obviously, anthropology's job is to take, the, you know, that one person's writing and confirm it with other sources. So it's not like one person invented something like, say, Mormonism. But, uh, you know, it, it, <laughs> that wasn't intended to be a dig, but that ended up being a dig. Uh, and I, I don't know. I'm just fascinated by it. Uh, I watched a really good video about a lot of the traditions. It just came out like a couple of weeks ago or something. I'll try to link it down below if I remember. But uh, while watching that, I remembered, oh yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about this because it, it's something that fascinates me. The, the traditions fascinate me because they seem to have a life of their own and we really champion them even though when we grow older, we realize they're all just bullshit. Like, our parents just made it all up. I'm curious to know how that worked in ye olden times. If you have any insight uh, or references you can point me to, let me know. Put that in the comments. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is jaundiced. It's an adjective meaning dem demonstrating prejudice due to an envy or resentment. The Blythington's view of our dinner parties is jaundiced by the fact that our personal chef is superior to theirs. Jaundiced. J-A-U-N-D-I-C-E-D. I thought jaundiced was specifically related to liver disease, like yellowing of the skin and eyes. I didn't realize it was a word that could be used as a word.